Hi everybody, I'm Will Greenwald of the PC Meg Labs. This is PC Meg Live and this is Sasha Segan back from Barcelona and Mobile World Congress. I'm back, it's so weird. I haven't been in the office for two weeks and of course we have a lot of great tech news for you today. Uh, one cool, incredibly expensive thing we pulled out of the labs and we're gonna answer a reader question. So uh, let's start, uh, it's uh, CarPlay DM. Uh, Apple launched CarPlay at the Geneva Motor Show today. Uh, it is an iPhone integration system for cars that are shipping in 2014, starting with Ferrari, Mercedes-Benz, and Volvo. And Hyundai. Uh, yeah, uh, but uh, more and than Jaguar. A, a dozen, well, more than a dozen Hyundai. other car makers have signed on uh, to produce CarPlay compatible cars over the next couple of years. Works with the iPhone 5 and higher. It'll put an iOS-like uh, display on your dashboard. You can control it with your voice, touch knobs, uh, depending on what the interface in your car is. Uh, well, this isn't the first time that companies have done this kind of thing, right? No, but in maybe two years, we're going to see probably every car or most cars have CarPlay and everyone's saying, oh, Apple invented it, because this is what Apple did with the tablet and the iPad, uh, the MP3 player and the iPod, the smartphone and the iPhone. This is basically Apple taking an idea that other companies have worked with for years trying to get to catch on but never quite succeeding, and polishing it to presumably, when it comes out, we'll find out, work well enough for people to actually jump on. So what have the other companies done wrong that Apple might be doing right here? Well, Apple has a huge user base and a certain level of consistency across its entire ecosystem, which a lot of other companies don't. Sam's, uh, <laughs> We'll get to yeah. Samsung. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Samsung says they're consistent. We'll get to Samsung. But a lot, of, a lot of other companies don't. And Android based systems or just not universal systems mm -hmm. where like Ford Sync or whatever different system works in a car isn't the same across all the cars. And by having AirPlay as one ecosystem across all of them, it's something Google might have been able to do a year or two ago with Android and say, okay, Android car. But and Google has its own issues with Android, and this is Apple's opportunity to really make it work across the field. Once again, the consistency in Apple's experience is a big differentiator for Apple. Okay, now speaking of Samsung, uh, yep. there's a lot of Samsung news going on today. First of all, the Samsung Galaxy S5 will come with $575 worth of free <coughs> software and subscriptions, but there's a catch to all of it. I'm reminded by uh, when there used to be print magazines, those print magazines used to have CDs and DVDs in them, and it used to say $90 worth of software in there. And yes, but it was like shareware, it was trial versions, or it was memberships, short-term stuff. Most of these are short-term memberships, like three months of LinkedIn Premium, six months of 50 gig Dropbox, a bunch of fitness stuff, all of which will expire. These. They might have a dollar value on them, but give it half a year, they're going to be gone, and it's basically just going to be a trial that sold you on the phone. Yeah, I mean, that's what really frustrates me about this particular teaser. I would rather have half as much stuff, but last for the two years where I expect to have the phone. I mean, most people hold on to their phones for two years. Or a quarter as much stuff and like Google Play Cash. Right, or, yeah, or a quarter as much stuff and have it be permanent. But so you have all these freebies and they all expire in six months yeah. and it just leaves you a bad taste in your mouth. It's kind of a glorified trial. Now, now speaking, speaking of Samsung, of course, the Oscars were last night. Um, I didn't watch the Oscars because I'm so horribly jet-lagged getting back from Europe. I fell asleep at like 8 o'clock. I didn't watch them because I didn't want to. Okay, but I hear that Samsung was all over the Oscars. And I was watching videos all this morning to catch up on that because that's, that's easy enough to do. And uh, Samsung had a big ad promoting this idea of one Samsung across their different kinds of devices. And then uh, Ellen DeGeneres was apparently forced to use a Samsung <laughs> Galaxy Note 3 throughout the uh, production. And she tweeted an image of herself with a bunch of celebrities, which became the most retweeted image ever. And then she went backstage and uh, tweeted something with her iPhone. And that just says something to me about these these tech product placements and how artificial they are yeah. and how, uh, you know, these, I don't know if these companies can win. I mean, have you ever heard of a product placement like this which you fe <clears throat> felt actually worked? Not really. I mean, there are different levels of how much branding can catch on. I am kind of looking forward to maybe a few months from now with uh, if Apple sponsors the Emmys and then the impending award show branding lawsuit between Samsung and Apple. Let's see this continue. Mm -hmm. But besides that, it's just marketing that they're spending a lot of money to getting brand recognition out, and Samsung is kind of one of those weird brands 
where it's huge and lots of people have Samsung products, but it's not anything people really remember that much compared to Apple, which has mastered branding. I've been talking to Samsung executives about how they want to create an emotional connection to the Samsung brand. Yeah. And that's what they need to take it to the next level. That's what they're trying to do here. And the big question is, are people going to feel emotional about Samsung? So moving on to our reader question, uh, Sean asked via email that he tried to install Chrome on his Kindle Fire by dropping the APK file, that's the Android app file, onto the device uh, and installing it, but his third-party installer won't let him do it. What's wrong? Well, it turns out that Chrome is a very, very picky uh, uh, application with a lot of different versions. And you have to find the very specific version of Chrome that works with the very specific version of uh, the OS on your Kindle Fire. And sometimes that can be difficult. And I would just recommend installing Opera or another third-party browser that doesn't come from Google and doesn't have these uh, picky little, we wish we were on a Google Android device issues. The Kindle Fire is useful in that you can install a bunch of different APKs, but Google-specific services, uh, the Play Store, Google Talk, Hangouts, anything that actually requires logging into Google, which is what Android does by default, uh, Kindle Fire doesn't really do. So yeah. anything that works together with that, there are going to be issues compared to just installing a third-party APK. So Sean, try Opera. It's a great browser. Uh, let's move on to one cool thing. Uh, be very careful with this, Will. This oh. is the phase one, way too expensive. Yeah, this, okay. The so IQ 250, $40,000 medium format back. Yeah, well, the, the back is 35 grand, yes. and it's another five Lines. for the front. But uh, the $35,000 back, which is the key component here, works with a whole bunch of different camera systems uh, like uh, Hasselblad, Contax, any number of large format bodies. This is the first medium format digital camera system with a CMOS image sensor to come to market that gives you live view and much better performance in low light compared to competing CCD sensors. Uh, it has a very sharp display. Uh, it's fast. It has built-in Wi-Fi so you can take photos using an iPad app. And the sensor is huge. It's almost twice as big as 35 millimeter full frame. So you're paying for being a really early adopter here. This is a brand new technology. This is very early in the game. It's the first of its kind. It's going to take some incredible images if you're a professional photographer who knows what to do with it. And, uh, you know, that's going to be who's paying $40,000 for a camera. And even then, any medium format, you're going to be spending way more than pr um, anything but the top of the line DSLR to begin with. So this type of thing, it might seem a lot, but if you're looking at professional gear, someone who needs to use a medium format back, they're going to be spending that much because yeah, this is professional and, equipment. And there's nothing else quite like yeah. it on the market yet. So yeah. we are uh, going to have a review of the Phase 1 IQ250 up soon on PCMag.com. You can see what our real photo expert, Jim Fisher, thinks of it. And uh, thank you very much for watching uh, PC Mag Live. We'll be back tomorrow with uh, more news, more reader questions, and a uh, probably less expensive gadget than this one. Maybe.